Chapter 11, Sing Down the Moon, page 56. Night was falling as we again reached the stream in the grove of budding cottonwoods. We had seen no sign of the Spaniards during the afternoon, but they were not far behind us. Our horses had begun to stumble, so we watered them and went a short way and rode into a draw that was hidden from the stream. We will rest here until the moon rises, Nihana said. It is too dark now for the Spaniards to see our tracks. Lie down and sleep. I will keep watch. Running Bird and, and I ba bathed our faces in the stream and ate some of the tortillas she had brought. Then we went back where the horses were tied and laid down. I slept for a while and had a bad dream and awoke to the sound of my black dog barking. He was standing beside me in the grass, face toward the stream. Running Bird was already on her feet trying to quiet him. I reached out and put my hand over his muzzle, but he squirmed away and kept barking. I ran toward the horse, which Nayana had untied. He may be barking at a wild animal, I said. It is time to go, Nayana said. The moon was rising over the hill behind us, but it was dark night in the draw where we were hidden. There was no other way out of the draw save the narrow way we had got come. We started toward the stream where the moonlight glittered on the water and the cottonwoods. My black dog was still barking. Nayana said, I would rather die than be captured again. I felt the same as Nehana did. I followed her closely and Running Bird followed me. The three of us rode out of the draw, gripping the horse's reins. We were ready to flee at the first sight of the Spaniards. Before we reached the stream, two horsemen came out of the trees into the moonlight. Something about them, the size of their horses and the way they rode, made me think they were Indians. We were not more than a dozen paces apart, still I was not certain. The black dog rushed at them and stopped. Then one of the horsemen shouted to us a single word in Navajo. I knew the voice. I would know it anywhere. Quietly, I answered him. I think Tallboy was more surprised than I was, for he rode up slowly and sat there on his horse, staring at me. Mando, his friend, also stared at me. Nihana said, the Spaniards are near. Without a word, the five of us rode off, Tallboy taking the lead. We rode hard until the first light of day. Tallboy spoke only once to me during the long night. It was about my black dog, and I have forgotten what he said, but I remember that it made me happy. Near dawn, while we slept, the Spaniards came along the stream. My black dog barked when they were still a distance away. We mounted our horses and rode out of the ravine where we were hidden. Mist was rising from the water. A cool wind blew from the east. It brought, us, it brought to us the sound of hoofbeats and the neigh of a horse. We cannot outride the Spaniards, Tallboy said. We will therefore go slowly on the trail toward home as if we did not fear them. We will not heed them unless they speak. We will not fight unless they attack us. Tallboy said this solemnly, but I knew by the fire deep in his eyes that he wanted to kill all the Spaniards, that he would do so if, he, if the chance came. We went in single file along a bank of the stream toward the rising sun. The sound of hoofs were muffled in the tall grass. Mando and Tallboy rode last with their lances sheathed and their bows, bows unstrung. As the sun came up, the three Spaniards overtook us. The one with the white teeth spoke to Tallboy. The woman rode, er, the women ride horses that belong to us, he said in Navajo. The horses were stolen. Tallboy did not answer. He spurred his horse and trotted up beside Nayana and me, saying in a whisper that we should not dismount. We rode on, bunched together, the Spaniards close behind us. There was no sound except the ringing of hawks' bells on their silver bits. We came to a clump of trees beside the stream. Here the leather shouted at us. I saw him swing down from the saddle and take a rifle from its holster. The two other Spaniards pulled up their horses. Tallboy told us to ride on and stop behind the trees. Then he said something to Mando under his breath. Together they gave a piercing war cry. I had heard this cry before many times since my childhood. It always froze my blood to hear it, and it did now. It sounded to me as if some evil spirit had leaped out from the far depths of the earth. The cry was not a human sound, nor the sound that any animal makes, whether in pain or fright. The leader held the rifle in one hand and the reins of his stallion. At the sound of the war cries, the horse leaped sideways, dragging his master with him. By the time the Spaniard loosened the reins and brought the rifle to his shoulder, Tallboy swept past him and in one swift thrust, 
planted the long lance, so his sword. The other Spaniards, seeing the death of their leader, fled into the trees. Tallboy and Mando did not pursue them. Instead, they motioned to us and set off up the stream. There was no sign of the two men. We had not gone far when a shot sounded from the trees where the Spaniards were hidden. A second shot struck Tallboy. He clutched the saddle horn but made no sound. He spurred his horse into a gallop and we followed. There were no more shots. The Spaniards did not come out of the trees. In a short time, Tallboy slowed his horse. He had turned pale and blood showed on his back. He stopped his horse and said, I can no longer sit in the saddle. Take this rope and tie me there. Mando and I took the rope and put it around his waist and tied him so that he could lean over the neck of the horse. The Spaniards did not follow us. We went slowly up the stream the way Tallboy and Mando had come. We traveled slowly all day. At dusk, we made camp and helped Tallboy down from his horse and laid him on the grass. He ate a little food and drank some water, but I feared that he was dying. I sat beside him through the night, bringing him water when he asked for it. I prayed that he would not die. Tallboy seemed better the next day, so we rode faster and longer, making many leagues. But on the third day, he could not climb into the saddle. Out of two willow poles and a blanket, we fashioned a sled and put him on it, hitching the sled to the strongest horse. We went slowly that day and the next, and on the fifth morning, as the sun rose, we came within sight of our canyon. You are near home, I said to Tallboy. Soon you will be well. Tallboy looked at me and tried to smile. I will ride on, I said, and tell the medicine man. Yes, said Tallboy. Tell him that he is needed. The end. So is tall boy going to make it? What's going to happen? Oh gosh, um, we just finished chapters 10 and 11 and you have learning journals, pages 18, which is the vocabulary section, and 19 to finish, which you need to draw a dramatic picture of a main event that occurred in each one of, or either one of the chapters, and add some evidence like a sentence or um, maybe a quote you can clip in there somehow of um, the scene that you are um, drawing a picture of. So have fun.